So my friends, welcome back to the channel, always with Yunus Sharpevi. In this video, we are going to see how we can implement Camera X with two use cases, which are preview use case and image capture use case. We are going to see how we can use it since we don't have a view or composable function that we can use directly in Jetpack Compose. We need to create a custom one using the Android view composable function that will use the legacy preview view of the camera X. We are going to learn many stuff. We are going to refactor many code and see how the API fits well with the composable stuff. Let's get started. So here I'm, I'm having, as you can see, an application, simple Android application. And we did here how to request the permission so it is just simple thing activity result stuff with activity result contract request permission we need also to put that in the manifest here so we need this camera permission here and then whenever the application starts we are going to launch the permission are not dealing with uh, granting it if it's not granted and checking like i want just to start the permission and use it okay if you want deep video about permissions you can check the one on my channel which uses the permission for accompanies library and also this one nice so how we can start doing that? So first we need to do the following. We need to add this dependencies here. So we added the dependencies for camera X, as you can see, that's the first step. Then we need to put something in the screen in order to preview the camera. For that, we don't have actually one in the compose stuff. We are going to create one ourselves. How we can do it? We can do it with the view API, okay? So this uh, interoperability stuff. How we are going to start? We are going to start by following. So here, let's create a new composable, okay? And we are going to call it camera view, like that. This is just a camera view or no, just camera preview, like that. And here, of course, it will accept a modifier, like this is good practice to accept modifiers everywhere. And then we should start by adding something called Android view, okay? So this Android view is a composable function. We will create inside it the view-based system, and then it will like adapt it to the compose world. So we need to create factory here. The factory requires something called, it, it will provide us with a context. So definitely we need the context to do many stuff. And here you will return that view. So the view we are going to create is called preview view. We already have the preview view in this package. The way it's created, you just need to pass context. We are going to put it here, preview view. And then we are going to return it as last one. Okay, that's basically all you need. Of course, we need to bind many stuff, so we are going to add more code. Now, the preview view requires some parameters. First, we need to set it like to the height and width. We, do, we need to do that match parent. Okay, so we do preview view like following. We do, I think, layout parameters, view group. Yeah, exactly, if I remember well. It's called layout params. And here we can pass two things, which are the following. View group also layout params and here there is match parent you are going to duplicate that and that way we make sure that this preview view is to the maximum size okay so if this one is fill max uh, size so this view will ensure that it will take all that space the next thing of course also there is some other parameter we can use which is the scale type so the scale type is here we call it preview view dot scale type yeah, there is a lot of stuff. We are going to use fill center here, but I think this one, since we are going to create composable and the composable will be reusable, it makes sense to create it and put it as parameter. So we do it like that. Okay, introduce the default value, which is this one, and let's call it stick. And that's basically it. I see there is some repetition. Well, we can do that with the apply like that, and then we can pull this out and also this here. This won't work, we need to do this here, and basically that's it. This is how we create the preview view. That's the first step. Then we need to create, well, we need two things now. We need the preview use case in order just to preview the UI, and then we need the camera provider, okay? This is the next two steps we need to implement. In order to create the preview use case, we need to do the following, like preview use case, like that, just called preview, and then we create a builder from that. Well, that's basically it. And then you need just to build. You can do many other stuff, but we can build it now. But the main important stuff why we need that, we need to tie this preview use case to the preview view. So we do the following preview use case dot set surface provider. And from where we are getting that surface provider, from the preview view we created, not use case, the view. And here we get its surface provider. So that way we are binding the preview view, the UI with the preview use case. Now we need to tell the preview use case to the camera X, of course, okay? So how we do that? Well, this will require a lot of similar stuff. Here we need to get a reference to the camera provider. 
Okay, so to do that, we need to do something called process camera provider, this one, and you get an instance using, guess what, with context. That's why we have context here. Now this one, like you introduce a variable here, let's call it preview listenable feature, it is listenable feature. And here using that feature, we are going to listen or changes, you add a listener. We need two parameters, we need the runnable and also the executor. The executor here will come from a context uh, compat dot get main executor and we pass the context like that and here once we arrive this at the moment this listener returns we are going to do listenable features dot get this will return us the process camera provider i can start it process let's call it just camera provider like that and let me just do something like the following nice i'm going to refactor this a little bit but i'm just going to create something that works first once we do that, we can, like this is the simple step, we can do the camera provider dot bind to lifecycle, okay? First you can bind uh, and bind all if there is something already there, and then you can bind our use case. So what we are going to bind? First thing, we need the lifecycle order, nice. So we need to have some lifecycle order here in this composable. You can get one to life cycle owner, like that. You get it using the local, I think there is one local lifecycle owner, and you get the current one, we pass this, here. Awesome. Next, we need the camera selector. Nice. The camera selector is basically camera selector back our phone, but I think this represents refactoring to put it as parameter since we can customize it on the above. We can do the following Control Alt P in order to extract it as parameter. Just introduce it as parameter here and click OK. And then we will have this is default parameter. Awesome. The last step is to add the use cases you have, which is in our case is the preview use case. This is sufficient and that should work. Let's run it. Here we go, it will ask us for the permission. So while using the app, yeah, of course, that's stupid. I should call that here. This is really stupid. <laughs> Let's call it one more time. Here we go, like this is an emulated scene. Okay, once you do that, you can try that with your application. You can check that this is the emulated scene. Basically, you can get a version from it here, here in the, uh, this thing, you can do the following. You can change show advanced setting exactly to use vertical scene. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes you use vertical scene in which you can move, but I'm going to use this emulated scene or that's the purpose. Okay. Yeah. That's basically it. the camera is working fine. Now we need to refactor some of the stuff. I'm not liking this thing. So what you are doing here, mainly you are getting a reference to the camera provider. And then with like the main important stuff is these two lines. The important stuff is these two lines. We can push out this code into some other function. So let's create, I think we should create, uh, since we do have a context, we can get a reference to the camera provider without the callback. So it means we can use suspend functions. So that's the thought process behind it. So we do suspend function and let's put it as context extension and let's call it camera provider because we need only the camera provider in order to do this two lines. Of course, we need to import that. Don't know why it's not important. Anyways, this will return us something called, like this is called process camera provider. So the return type will be process camera provider and it will be equal directly to the suspend coroutine. That way we can return a continuation that contains this thing. Okay, so what we are going to do, we are going to do exactly this. Thing. Here we are going to create visible features. The context is exactly this one. And then we are going to do the exact same thing. This one, but here, Instead of pushing it here, like we just do that and replace this with this. <laughs> replace this with this, anyways. And here, exactly, that's the thing I want to push. So I can do the following I can do it. It represents the continuation. I can do resume and I can push this here. That's exactly what we need. And then I can rename this to something called continuation. So it makes a lot of sense right now. The only problem is this is spendable function. We can do, we can create the camera provider like that. We can create it like that, but we can do the context dot camera provider. Nice. And then we can do exactly these two lines and that's it. That's like, look how it looks right now. It's much, much pretty. This is awesome. Okay. Now the only problem is this needs suspendable function. And since we are in an Android view, we can't use launched effect. So we're going to create, yeah, curtain scope, curtain scope, and it will be like the following. So we are going to just remember curtain scope, which is this one. And simply put, here you go, curtain scope, flash, 
that's exactly what we need. We need to relaunch it to check if everything's working fine. We can extract this to functions. We can also provide parameters for like the use case to make this generic, but we'll get into that in a minute. So everything is working fine. As you can see, the camera is working fine. That's the main idea how to create a camera X composable function that will do the preview. And by the same token, you can use the same logic here, but just to pass a different use case. Nice. Now we are going to do one extra step, which is taking pictures. How we are going to do it? Well, first of all, we need a way to click on something to get an event for us. So I think, yeah, let's create just a box. Exactly. And this, it will require a modifier to fill max size. Nice. And you, here we can pass this one. Exactly, this will be also fill max size. Also, we need just a button. Maybe we can put an icon button here. And when we click on it, we are going to capture something. So I'm going to push the code here for to something called capture image. Let's create a function for that. We are going to get back, but this is just meant to organize code. And here we are going to put an image. Let's put the painter resource. We need an icon. I already added an icon of the lens here. You can find it here. While well, this is just simple drawable, here is it. This is just a tab for the button. Next, you are going to do r.drawable.this1.lens. Awesome. Next, we need to set up some things for that camera icon. Add the description like that. Let's also add a modifier and let's give it also some padding. Here, let's put, I don't know, some 16 dp stuff. And let's visualize that again to check if everything is fine for the moment. Like, I mean, this thing, we don't have any capture image yet, but I want just to check the UI. So here is the UI. Nice. Here is our button. We are going to click this button and I did some modification here in order just for this button thing. And now we can start implementing this capture image. Now, in order to do the capture image, we need to use the image capture use case. And to do so, we need to pass it also to this one. So we need a way to pass things here. You can provide a generic type of camera in which they can accept multiple use cases that could work. But also you can create camera preview that takes as parameter, for example, use case for image capture. And that's the thing we are going to do. So here I'm going to accept another parameter called image capture use case. And using that image capture use case, I can just pass it here. Sorry, let me just put this one here. And that's basically it on how to link the image capture to the camera provider. Next, well, of course, we need to pass that image capture stuff here. And since we are in composable fashion, we are going to do it like that, image capture. And then we are going to remember it using the normal remember stuff like that. And here it will be just a normal image capture use case. Yeah, so it will be the image capture dot builder dot normal bit. Okay, well, there is a lot of parameters you can specify here, but you want just to pass an image capture thing. Okay, then we can pass this image capture here. That's all you need. Now we linked this one here. You need to put it as image capture equal like that. Okay, nice. Now we need to do something to that image capture. Well, here in this function, we need to capture the image. Well, we need to pass this one like that. And let's add it as parameter. So here we need to do the capturing of the image. Well, there are many stuff that need to happen here. First, like since you have the image capture, you can do the following and you can do take picture. You need an executor. First, you need that executor. The executor can be created as the following. Let me just put something here. Late init var, let's call it camera executor and it will be just an executor and let me just initialize it here using executors dot yeah, single thread here. and now I can pass it here that's the first parameter the second parameter or let me just put the first parameter is the output file options where are going to store the, uh, the image okay for that there are there are many things you can do something as file dot temp create temporary file it can be like image as prefix and as a suffix, we can use .jpg, okay? So this will create us a temporary file, but you don't use that file directly like that, okay? We'll do it uh, with other stuff. We need something called, you can get from the image capture, something called output file options. And here you can create from the builder, you can pass here a file, exactly. You can pass a file. You can specify custom directory if you want, like you have flexibility to do that. And then we're just going to build it. And this is will be the output file option. And we need to pass it as the first parameter. 
Yes, last parameter, which is object of the thing, which is, the, I think, yeah, let me check the parameter again. It is image capture on image save callback. Image capture on image save callback. This one, which is an interface, we need to implement its parameters. So it will give you two stuff on image saved and uh, on error. For error, I can just print error. And here, I get just also going to print, like we are not going to show it since we need to do that. I need just to get a reference to it. So the URI is, and here you can need to get output file results, and here you can get the saved URI. That's basically all you need. Now I think it should work. Let's get started. Let's launch it. Check out the lockout here. We don't have anything in here. Nice, let me just do the system here to check if anything is there. And let me just click on it. Exactly, the URI is this one. If you can remember the image is 657, but if you click on it, exactly, you can check it, but you can find it here in the device explorer. If you go to the device explorer and search under data, data, and search for your package, which is this one, compose, and check for cache, you will find it here. This is the image you have. While there is problem of rotation, there are a lot of stuff going on here that we need to take into consideration, but this is how mainly how you do it. So I hope you got the idea clearly on how to implement the Jetpack Compose version of the Camera X. Still requires some things, but the code is pretty simple. We need to create a view why we are doing that because we don't have composable UI for that. So we are using the preview view from the legacy view system. And then we are integrating it with this one, with this interoperable uh, Android view. You can use any view with this one to turn it into a composed fashion. Then using this Android view, we well, need to return it at last. Why we need that preview view? Because we need it to bind it with the preview use case. And then that use case, we are binding it with the camera provided. We created an extension function to return the process camera view just to make the code much easier to read. And then we added this image capture. We can make this function a little bit generic by accepting specific uh, use cases, but this is just a demonstration. You can create multiple composable for specific reasons, maybe for video capture composable, like take uh, image capture, image analysis, and so on. Like this is the main idea. This is the thing I wanted to explain. I didn't want to give you some use case that you can copy and paste and work in your application, but I wanted to give you an understanding so you can implement whatever you want in the way you want. That's basically it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and as always, see you in the next videos. Salam alaikum.